Hey everyone, my name is Matt. I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video, I'm gonna have a go at scraping movie review information from IMDb using Python. So this is gonna be the first part in a two-part project I'm working on, where basically I wanna get a ton of data about some of my favorite shows, and I wanna analyze it using Python. The second part's gonna be more to do with how do you process and visualize data, but in this video, we're gonna look at how do you extract the data from the internet. So we can actually do this in three steps. So the first step is gonna be using the request library to actually make a request to the website and get all the raw HTML information. The second step is gonna be using the beautiful soup library to process and parse that information and then isolate the key elements that we're interested in. And the final step is once we have all that information, we need to get it into a format that we can analyze. So we'll be using pandas to turn it into something called a data frame. So now that we know what we're building today, I'm just gonna move my camera and let's get into it. Okay, hey, and we're live. So uh, what you're looking at right now is just my Jupyter notebook. So as you can see, I've already written down some things. I have uh, a list of imports, so the libraries we talked about earlier. And then I also wrote down some instructions for myself to give the video some structure, but also just to remind me what it is I'm trying to do. Uh, and a bit more context on that. So this is the website we're looking to scrape. So this is just IMDb. I'm on the Simpsons page at the moment. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here and go to episodes. And when that loads up, uh, you can see here you have a, a web page, which is every season of The Simpsons. And then you have the episodes down under in these kind of tiles. We're going to drop down to the first season. And you can see that it has the information that we're interested in scraping. So it has the name of the episode, the air date, the total score, how many votes received, and a synopsis if you want to grab that as well. And what we're looking to do is if you do Control shift i or another way of doing this is right-click inspect. If you're in a Chromium browser, this works. So what this does is we can now look at the HTML doc string of this website. And these are all the elements that actually make up the web page. And what we want to do is we want to request that information. Okay, so that's going to be the first step. What we're going to do is work with the request library. The way I like to structure these videos is I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to speed through the actual coding process and I'll come back and talk you through the rows. So yeah, let's just get on with that. Okay, great. So that's worked. Uh, what I've done is I've declared the URL, which is just the URL of that page. Uh, and then I've declared this response variable. And basically what I'm doing is I'm calling requests and then the method get, and I'm feeding into it the URL. If, uh, if all goes well, then what should happen is response should give you a 200 message, so response 200. And that means that the connection works and we're, we're receiving information. If you get any other codes, then something's wrong. So you may want to review that. Then what we did was we declared this thing called a season page. Um, and basically we've used the beautiful soup library and we've got given into it response.content. And when you do that, what happens is we get the, that was a bit slow, but we get the entire HTML doc string of that page, which is exactly what we were looking for. But this is a bit too much information. Uh, so what we're going to do now is actually dive into, I'm just going to leave this, uh, dive into the actual um, content here. So what we're interested in, if you go to the top left and, and click on this little mouse, then you can actually start highlighting elements of the page you're interested in. What we want is this. We want these tiles. So it, it helps to be familiar with how you build web pages. Uh, it's not 100% necessary, but it does help because you do have to dissect down the nested layers of divs and other bits. So it does help. But we're looking at this. So we have a list item and that's fine, but I can see that it, 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 it goes between list item odd and list item even. And I, I don't like that. I want, I want something consistent and reliable that I can reference. So if we go down here, what we can see is actually we have this info class and I... I'm, I'm very sure that this info class is shared between all the different list items. Yes, yeah, so we can see is here. So that's what we want. We want now to isolate the individual episodes. So I'm just gonna write that quickly. Okay. 
Okay, great. So what we've done is uh, we want the individual episode tiles. So here we've declared a variable called episode tiles. We fed into it the season page and we use this find all method, which basically, as the name might imply, finds all the things that match the certain criteria. So our criteria was we want to look for all divs with the attributes class info. So if we go back here, we can see that uh, this info, this info bit here is a div, is in between these div brackets. Um, and it has the class info. And what that means is if we, it returns a list. So if we do len, there are 13 items in this list. And if we go down, we can see there are 13 episodes. So we know it's scraping everything. And if we also just run that one more time to see its content, we can see the makeup. So here, if we dig into it, you can see the, the, the air date. So we have the air date here. Uh, we have the title of the episode here, Simpsons Roasting on Open Fire. Uh, and then we have somewhere in here, oh, here we go. So we also have the rating it received and how many votes it got. So again, this is great. We've managed to narrow it down, but it's still not exactly what we need for this project. So we have to go one step further, which takes us now to our second step, which is isolate the relevant sections. So first things first, let's define what we want to get. So looking here, we want the title, of course. We want the air date. We want the stars. Well, not stars, but how many stars. And we want the number of votes. So let's just write that quickly. Okay, great. So now we have the individual elements we want to get. And what we're gonna have to do first is we need, so if you remember the episode tiles um, uh, variable is a list and we wanna parse through every, um, every element in that list. So first we're gonna temporarily call this episode, uh, first episode, and then we're gonna say episode tiles zero. Just double check that works. Yeah, so now we've, we've, uh, I, we've narrowed it down to just the first episode. And we're gonna have a go at getting the episode name. So the way we would do that is we'd have to dissect the HTML one more time. So click this, go to the name, it's highlighted here. So if we go to the info class, which is currently what we have, and we look down, we can see that the title is in between these strong tags, and then it sits in an attribute variable. So that's great because that's really straightforward. Basically what we do then is we call the first episode. Then we say in between strong and then in between the attribute, give me the text. And let's just make sure that works. So uh, I'm gonna use a format string. So episode name equals and episode name. Does that work? And we have it. So now we managed to isolate the name of the episode, which is great. Next up, let's do episode air date. Episode air date, so same thing as before, select element, go to air date. So where does that sit? So this sits, if we go back to info, info's here, we can see that it sits in a div and there are lots of divs here. So we wanna, we wanna keep our queries specific. So we'll have to use a method called find. Before we do that though, let's let's investigate this. So div and the class is called air date. Great. So as before, first episode dot find. And then just like before, we're saying, okay, we're looking for a div. And the div has to have the attributes of class air date. And then we want the text within that. So as before, let's just Make sure this works. Great, and we got it. So uh, 2nd of September, 1990, that's correct. But we can see it has some pretty weird formatting. I think it has a has a tab in there. Um, so we can clean this up really easily. Just use the strip function at the end and it clears everything behind it and in front of it. And that's, um, that's empty. And we can see that formatted it properly. I'm gonna do one extra thing. I don't like that dot and uh, it might mess things up later on. So I'm gonna also strip out the dot using a replace method. So dot replace the dot with nothing. Super. The episode score and episode votes uh, are similar to 
episode air date. So I'm just gonna power through those and be back in a second. Okay, great, and we're back. So we've powered through that. Um, it, it it follows the exact same process we've done before, except you can see it's a bit more nested. So for the score, it actually sits within this class class span. Uh, no, sorry, it sits within a div class called IPL rating star small, and then that sit sits within a div called IPL rating widget. So we kind of had to go down the nest uh, slightly, but it was the same process. So you can see here, uh, find div with the attributes IPL class, sorry, IPL rating widget, and then find div with the class IPL rating star small, great. And then finally find a span, so not a div, a span with the class IPL rating star rating, because this one sits within the span, great. And then uh, that worked. The second one was episode votes, and this was uh, ex more or less the same, except instead of IPL star, uh, IPL rating star rating, it's IPL rating star total votes, which is fine. And then we did some formatting on top of that uh, because it came with brackets and a comma, and I don't want that. So dot strip, strip out the brackets, and then replace the comma with nothing. And then we have our bits here. So. Super, now we, we have our information, uh, but this is just one episode. We want it for all the episodes within that season, and that's easy to do. That's just putting everything into a for loop. So I'm gonna do that very quickly. Okay, cool. So literally just a for loop for episode in episode tiles, easy enough, uh, and then we, would, we, we had all the exact same uh, bits of code, but at the end I added a print new line statement just to give it a bit more visibility. So we can see here now we have Simpsons Roasting Open Fire, Bart the Genius, Homer's Odyssey, and all the information for every episode, which is great. We're, we're getting there. We're really, really close to the finish now. But this is just one season. What we really want is all the seasons. So just like before, we're going to put down a for loop. Um, but we're gonna have to merge the thing, we're gonna have to merge the two things we've built already. So, just like before, uh, give me one moment. Okay, cool, and we're back. So, literally all I did was I created a for loop and uh, input the thing we wrote earlier. However, uh, what you'd notice is for the URL, there's actually this season bit at the end, so season equals, and that originally equaled one, which tells me that if I put in two, it'll give me season two, logically. Uh, so I did a for loop for season in range three, but remember when you do range, it starts at zero, not one. So just to be uh, absolutely clear, season number or season no equals season plus one, just to make sure no errors come up. And then what I did was uh, fed that into this format string, so it would equal whatever it is in the loop, um, and then just do what it did before, which is great. So now we can see here, I'm actually gonna run it again, because I added uh, this bit of text here to tell when the seasons start and end. Uh, parsing season one, we have all our bits, and then parsing season two, we have all our bits, and this should go up to three, so parsing season three, we have all the bits. Excellent, and we can literally go up to all 32 seasons if we wanted, which at the moment we don't. So now we have a, w a method of getting the season information, for, well, the episode information for every episode in a season for as many seasons as we want, which is awesome. We, we can extract that information, but now we need to get it into a format that we can analyze, which takes us to our last point. So very quickly, just to demonstrate what we'll be doing, we'll be using pandas to create a data frame. And the way this works is let's say df which is this convention for data frame df equals pd which is pandas um pd dot uh data frame great so pd dot data frame we're going to feed into that a dictionary and the keys in this dictionary equal the columns and then we're going to put a list object as the value of that key 
and that'll represent the rows. So just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna write up an example. Great, and so you can see here, we have our, our, our keys as the columns and then our values as this list. And when we export that into a data frame and we, we call it, you can see columns along the top and then our values down here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is what we're gonna do. And to do that, we'll need to put all this information into a list. And that's straightforward because we've already, we're, we're already able to actually isolate the information. It's just appending it to a list. So I'm gonna do that very quickly. Okay, great, and it seems like it's worked. So uh, I couldn't be bothered to remove all the print statements, so apologies for that. But basically all I've done is I've declared these empty lists with the titles of the columns and just added list at the end just to make that differentiation clear. So season number, episode number, uh, episode name, air date, score, votes, great. Uh, and then at the end of the final for loop, I have uh, season number list append and then the season number uh, Great episode number list. So this was slightly different because we didn't have a way of actually getting the episode number So what I did was I used this uh, function called enumerate onto the list and basically what that does is on top of Iterating through the elements in that list. It will also give me the index of that list so to make enumerate work you have to add an extra variable in front of whatever it is you're iterating through. So I called it episode number. So I've appended episode number uh, plus one onto that list, and then episode name, episode name, air date, air date, score, score, votes, votes. Great. And then uh, just to make sure it worked, I uh, printed them out and it's a bit messy, but you can see here that one, 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 two, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Um, you have all, this, all the names, uh, all the scores, and it looks like it's worked. We're now gonna feed this into a data frame. So, just like before, gonna code this real quick. Whew, and we did it. Awesome, so sigh, sigh of relief. Great, it all came together, but you can see here now, so we've plugged in we plugged in our lists, we've uh, given a, a column name, uh, which is just the list name without list at the end, and uh, turned it into a data frame. And this is what our data frame looks like. So you have your index, you don't have to worry too much about that for now. Um, then you have your season number, episode number, da, 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 et cetera. And when we scroll down, we can see that it does appear that everything is where it should be. And we have successfully scraped the information. So awesome, we did it. We did it, we did it. So the positioning and uh, lighting might be a bit different because I just moved my camera back, but there you have it. We've managed to do that successfully. And um, yeah, really, really pleased with those results. The thing is now you can actually input all 32 seasons if you'd like, just by changing that range variable. You can add in uh, other URLs because the, the structure of that web page is the same for every single series. It might not work with movies. You'll have to probably uh, shift some of the code, but fundamentally that's how you do it. So as I said, this is the first part in a two-part project I'm working on where now we know how to get the information. How do we visualize it? How do we use visualization and storytelling to try and draw insights and convey messages and you know who knows what it will look like. So if you're interested in that, do stick around and check out my next video. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, so again if you have any comments or feedback, I'm happy to take it. Otherwise, thank you for checking out my video and yeah, hope to see you soon. <laughs>